Hi, Net. Hi, Sandeep. How are you? Welcome. I'm fine. How are you? Good morning to you. And good evening to you. <laughs> Thank you. So, how's everything? How's Mexico? Uh, you know, how are things going in Mexico? How are you? Well, uh, in my personal life, everything is good. Thank God every family member is safe, we're healthy, and we're staying inside. Um, as far as Mexico, I'm going to tell you a little background about our country. So, we entered uh, the quarantine phase a little late on the game, but yet, um, I think the prevention uh, measures were introduced before it started getting bad. So we've been in this quarantine state for a few weeks now, as well as like other parts of Europe. Like at the same time they were getting this, we started with the, all the measurements. As today, um, on new sites, on general knowledge of the population, there are like 6,200 uh, cases confirmed by the hospitals like 500 deaths and they say like 13,000 cases probable cases right um but uh when we hear the minister of health talk like i was telling you before it's they say you have to multiply the number of cases by a factor of 10 or 9 so we are looking at a 6,000 uh 6,000 cases right now in mexico but we don't know the real the reality of the situation so the uncertainty is um, very concerning in the country because as they don't tell us the entire truth, we don't know what to expect in terms of personal life, getting out of isolation, businesses, uh, when the public life is, is going to pick up. It was supposed that the lockdown was going to be lifted on the 1st of May. And now, yesterday, they just announced it is going to go on for like another 30 days. So businesses so should start till the 1st of June. Whoa. And, and that goes to all businesses. So they made, they, they made all industries close for non-essential businesses. So they um, gave a list to what business is essential or not. And uh, to go more about this subject, it's really concerning because uh, the, the fashion industry in Mexico, the textile industry, when this first started happening, they said, they, they called the government out and they, and they said, hey, we know that we are not uh, an industry that needs to be operating right now, but we want to be like, let you, let, let you government make us work so our employees keep having a salary and keep working and we will change the industry and we will provide medical supplies we will do like medical robes masks and the government said no so really? that is really con yeah so that tells you that they are not understanding the problem as other countries because all the textile industry in Mexico is so powerful and they could be doing so much to help the hospitals and to be doing all of these masks, protective um, uniforms for the healthcare workers that they do need them because we don't know how is this is going to scale and how much demand are these products going to get. And the government said, no, you have to close and whoever doesn't like don't close, we're going to penalize you. So... Oh. Oh, so, but where are, where, are they, where are they getting the clothing for the PPE, uh, this productive clothing? Where are they getting it from? Well, the textile industry, I think like 13% of the entire textile industry in Mexico was doing that. So, they are the ones that could stay open. What they didn't uh -huh. let is for the other textile industry that wasn't doing that before to shift and start creating them. So, already you had a big base for this kind of products being made in Mexico. Yeah. So, for example, um, the like the polls, well, the the analysis said that if we would have changed all the industry and we would get the knowledge to start creating all of these medical supplies and masks and stuff like that, we would be prepared for what is going to come. But as we are not doing that, and if it goes way beyond what they tell what they tell us that's going to happen, we're going to have a lack of these things and a shortage. 
and then a real problem is going to happen with the industry as a, a lot of jobs are getting lost so well, it's really sad because uh, they could have used your strength you know and uh, already you have such a big base in uh, this kind of uh, products it could have been also a big uh, opportunity to export i mean because the world needs this kind of products right now in big quantities so it would have exactly. been good for the uh, for the domestic usage as well as for the community around the world so it would of have been course. a great great contribution from the industry actually yeah but, but we don't have a really good government supporting the textile industry right now so also there uh there were a couple of industries that didn't stop so all over the news yesterday was um government agencies starting penalizing these industries because they refused to close on the or they were operating uh slowly kind of thing like halfway but now everything has to be closed till for their notice till when they start reopening the economy here how big is textile industry as percentage of your uh, gdp like there's just some some comment coming here so i thought it it's we are talking related things so let me if you have an idea the textile uh, business in mexico is primarily uh, focused on the us market the textile business in mexico is one of the well we can say it's a very large part of the economy here because we are big importers of textiles um i can tell you as part of the denim industry we import a lot uh to different countries and we are losing i think it's about i don't know 13% of the workforce that is going to lose their jobs over to textile industry in mexico don't uh not operating so there are about uh 3 100,000 or 400,000 jobs are going to be lost because of the amount of workers that work in the textile industry in Mexico. Uh what I was trying to understand was that uh Mexico's uh, the textile business is uh focused mainly on the US market. You are mainly exporting to the US. That's your biggest market. Yes. Well, we have to think about this as well we I I know that we are going to talk about this later but uh we're talking about new shoring right so it makes sense like if you're going to be creating manufacturing in mexico you have to be thinking about exporting to countries that are nearby so mostly manufacturing in mexico well we create um the textile industry the supply chain goes all the way in the americas mostly you manufacture in latin america or in south america and then it goes back to the us or to canada or we do this uh line up like line uh vertical kind of supply chain because at the end new showing is the future and you have to think about sourcing close to home because also the carbon footprint is going to be less so and you have to take advantage of the duty free qualities that are happening with all the trade agreements so that creates mexico a really important um key place to be sourcing because the duty free policies because between mexico and the us as well so what i was coming to was that in last one year because of this trade dispute with china uh, some business was already shifting to mexico so that was already happening so now last two months uh, have you seen that there is an increased trend towards this i mean are the us buyers from us the retailers from us uh inquiring more about uh, doing business in mexico yes well this started actually happening when all this trade war was happening so we saw a lot of the major brands that were mostly sourcing in asia let's say china uh start uh diversifying their supply chain like with all of this trade war they they learn that they cannot source in just one place they cannot depend on asia just uh, like they they have to diversify so they started looking for uh different options in mexico that doesn't mean that they changed their entire supply chain to start creating in mexico they were just changing some parts of it like they want to give a little bit of business to mexico for example one of the biggest um companies let's say gap the gap they started uh looking for mexico as an option to start sourcing and this company is one that only was sourcing from asia so that was a really great opportunity for us as this trade war continues and will continue after this and with all this uh pandemic happening it i think it's going to reinforce more 
this um, conduct of the brands to start sourcing close to home and start looking for other alternatives. So if something happens in one country, they have a backup of the other countries to create and keep their supply chain going and not stop. Uh, so, uh, you know, in destinations like uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh, China, they have been huge cancellations of orders by European and US buyers. So is the same thing has happened in Mexico or not? Um, well, I think sourcing in Asia still is uh, cheaper than sourcing in Mexico. But we do get a lot of requirements from companies that do source there to say, hey, I'm trying to, to leave that place. And I'm trying to source close to home because, as I said, uh, new sourcing is going to be the new thing that's going to be happening, right? So they're trying, like, all of these companies are trying to be sustainable. I know that we're going to talk about sustainability more in the like future of this interview, but if you're going to be sustainable, your carbon footprint is something really important. So if a company is a U.S. company that manufactures in Nicaragua or in Guatemala or in Panama, it's it's unthinkable to know that they're sourcing their raw materials from Bangladesh or from Pakistan and they're creating this entire line around the globe of like taking their raw materials from one place and sending them all around the globe to another place and then selling that in the US. So at the end, the carbon footprint is way bigger than the actual sustainability they're putting on their teams. So their sustainability is canceled. Uh, so no, my question was. Uh, my question actually was that: uh, Did you face any cancellations of orders uh, from the U.S. and European markets, uh, as other other uh, countries like Bangladesh and Pakistan and China have faced? So, do you uh, do you also have uh, cance massive cancellation of orders from the U.S. buyers? Are you talking about now the with the virus yeah. or in last one month? In last one month. No. Actually, you haven't had any cancellation. The brands have been very supportive and they're just postponing the orders. So, for example, we are not having any new orders, of course, because all the industry shut down. And if there is no one producing, then we cannot fulfill orders at the moment. But we're getting uh, orders postponed. For example, anything that was going to be delivered on May or June, they're, going, they're pushing it to July. And of course, all of this depends on when the governments open the economy, right? So we're trying to make that happen, but if we don't open, we're not going to be able to supply. If they don't open, we're not going to be able to send, even if we are open, right? And for example, we did some weeks ago, well, I mean, then early this week, we did supply an order that was meaning to go to Nicaragua because they're still open. but. This entire supply chain is so disrupted that, for example, if I take, if it takes 15 days to get my shipment from Mexico to Nicaragua for them to start manufacturing, and in 15 days the situation in Nicaragua changes and the manufacturing is closed, then we get into a problem because my fabric was on the way. So I think this is a really good moment to, to just click pause on the industry and wait for it to recover so no one gets their losses. And well, we really appreciate no one canceling their orders because this is a very good time for partnerships and to stand by your suppliers. So that's that's very wonderful. You know, that's wonderful to hear because normally we hear uh, bad news from around the world. So this is a very good news, I would say. Yes, of course. And for example, um, us as a company, like we decided to close before the government was doing that mandatory because at the end, as a family business, we take care of our family, right? So health is first. Like you cannot put your people at risk in any case. So we did decided to close for a month before this was mandatory and then the government lockdown made it mandatory. So we sent all of our employees home we gave them uh, little messages of good health and um, positivity and gave them like box, boxes of food and home supplies to take to their families. And I'm really? talking, we're having over 1,500 employees and we did that. We left them with all of their salaries, with vacation and payment plans in place till this gets uh, geared and done. 
because at the end, this is the time to stand by your people because this time is what's going to mark you for a long time from now. Like people are going to look back at this time and see how they responded because people that claim sustainability, claim family values and are not standing by their employees at this time, it's not going to be it's like, fake. It's, fake, it's yeah. bullshit. I mean, I really appreciate what you have uh, you been doing in this regard. Uh, that's wonderful. I think wonderful CSR activities and supporting your employees at this time and uh, closing much before what the government was uh, when the government asking you to close down. So that's really thoughtful and uh, considerate, uh, considerable for the employees. So. Uh, so, no, yeah, I was going to say, let's hope this all ends fast so everyone can go back to work and we can start producing again and keep the supply chain going on. We really hope so. It comes back very soon. Uh, in terms of uh, products, as a dream as a product, do you feel that, because you're also a creative uh, director of the company, so do you feel that there will be some changes in the character of product which will be coming in the a near time uh, because of this crisis, because of the kind of uh, products the buyers may be wanting, uh, different kind of products, or will it be the same thing? Are we talking about character on, of denim or like design in general? Uh, the character of denim. Well, I think uh, you have to see, in my opinion, we have to see denim as a timeless thing. So if denim hasn't changed much in character, like in how you look at denim, it can change in composition. But the look of denim still remains the same through time, right? Because that's the beauty of denim. It remains uh, eternal kind of thing. It's a really beautiful fabric. So like in the near future, I don't think like... If you see denim, you're going to see something different because that's what we're trying to aim. We're trying to keep denim the authentic character like it first started, right? But in constructions, I do see a lot of change. We were already in this path of change. We were introducing new materials to denim. We were introducing hem. We were introducing linen. We were introducing tensels. And that changes... It changes the character of denim. It changes in how um, the touch of the denim, which will be very important now as well. Like all of the softness qualities are going to be very important because as people are going to get through this, they're going to look for comfort and they're going to look to feel the uh, softness quality of fabrics. I see a lot of innovation happening, like protective uh, qualities, technological qualities, and maybe the introduction of technology yarns is going to change the character as we saw but this is already happening i just think this is going to fast forward the innovation but we already saw levi's doing the tropper jacket project um, oh you wanted that uh, okay okay that's very good so it's, it's something that was already in the making but we're going to see a fast forward or we're going to see more demand uh, because I've been hearing a lot of people claim, oh, yeah, we're going to get a lot of microbial uh, denim or antibacterial. But hey, look, at, like we already did that. We have been doing antimicrobial with the silver quality to get that uh, done for some years now. But the demand on the market wasn't there. So when all this funny innovation happened, the price increases, right? So the market doesn't demand that much because they see, well, I don't need this right now. But the, the innovation was already there. But as this happened, the market will start getting more interest. And while the market gets interest, they're willing to invest. It's going to be a little more. So that will jumpstart again the innovation. And all of the things that we were doing before, are going to be having a boom right now. Also, more innovation is going to come, of course, but we can see a lot of the things happening, um, well, really picking up what we did. So you're very well prepared in advance with all, all kinds of products which might be required uh, in current situation that it looks like that. Yeah, well, let's see. <laughs> but I do not think denim is going to change that much in character. Like when I see a pair of jeans, it's still going to be remaining a pair of jeans. Uh, because we we love our jeans, we love how they are denim looks. So we're not maybe we, hand. maybe if you are uh, working more from home, the period will be more softer denims or knitted denims. Maybe 
Of course. Like, you're talking about need to denim as something that's going to be a boom also because we're staying at home. But need to denim was already there. Just the market is going to pick more interest, so it's going to be produced more, let's say. And something that is really important too, which, that we don't hear very much, is that with every trend that happens, there comes an anti-trend. And there's a, a swing effect. So as well as there's going to be protective denim and it's going to be uh, technological qualities, we're going to go back to basic and we're going to go, there's another entire people, like population um, segment that's going to want basics, essentialism. Well, essentialism is not basic, let's call it that, but they're going to go back to heritage. They want to feel like old times. They're going to look back to old times where everything was okay and say like, I want to feel like those old times and I want to be closer to the earth. I want to be closer to nature. So I would want a 100% rigid uh, cotton garment because that reminds me of past time. So I think we're going to see these two trends evolve, like back to heritage, back to the old way. Two ends of the spectrum, so I mean. Exactly, and they're going to be very uh, different from each other. And I think the younger generations are the ones that are going to drive this change because you see millennials and Generation Z people actually going back to all of this beginning and playing nostalgia. Like, nostalgia is playing a really big part in their lives, and it's going to be playing that part even more right now because. Uh, these people were born in, with technology. They were born in this uh, digital era. And there will come a time where they say, enough. I want to disconnect to connect. And I want to go back to the beginning. And I want to go back to some craftsmanship making my jeans. So we're going to see a lot of more collections of uh, handcrafted jeans. Um, maybe the new normal is going to be, as sustainability is going to be the new normal. Maybe... Uh, a capsule collection of handmade sorry i'm losing you all right i'm here do you listen to me no no it's okay yeah okay so as sustainability becomes a new normal maybe the new capsule collection of brands will be handcrafted or uh this small drum production is made locally with uh local things uh and uh handcrafted people made with your jeans because people are going to start going more to what, like, Mustaine thing, like, not digital, what brings them back to the earth, to, you know? But uh, that's going to be in the So, uh, basically, you feel that, uh, sorry. Uh, so, you feel that uh, small artisanal brands may be actually uh, growing well after this epidemic? Yes, I think, uh, well, whoever makes it out of this crisis as a big brand, like whoever can manage uh, the liquidity and to stay afloat will grow. Like, I mean, small brands. And after this, I know that a lot of more small businesses are going to start appearing as sustainable business and as uh, handcrafted businesses that are going to be completely opposite to automatization. And like, they want to be the difference, you know? So in a world that is going to be overpowered by automatization and robotics or virtual things, they're going to become a part where they say, no, we're more down to earth. Our things are made locally. We're employing uh, people that are in need. And we're going to see like this to trans involved also. You know, sustainability, you know, that is again a point, uh, biggest point in our debates, in all of our discussions with everybody around the world from our industry. So sustainability definition is evolving. After this pandemic, the sustainability uh, definition is changing. We're talking about human aspect becoming a major part of the sustainability now. So uh, do you think uh, uh, the changes also uh, will happen simultaneously, which will change the definition of sustainability and bring some kind of uniformity in terms of its definition yes well i think sustainability has like you said has changed over time at first we were talking about sustainability only bringing like better materials into the mix or like if we're talking about jeans it was like washing them uh with better practices later with also but as all of this happens we have to understand sustainability as three uh, like three major 
um, important things to consider. It's economical, uh, social impact, and environmental impact. So we have to talk about sustainability as an economic and social thing first. Um, so with this happening, we're going to start seeing like some sustainable business as a business that backs their employees. That's sustainability. As a business that has, you know, a solvency to continue paying uh, salaries because it's all interconnected. So a business can claim to be sustainable if they're employing uh, people and they're doing over hours without paying them or they're not backing their needs. So sustainability has to be a whole circular thing as well as the economy. So it is going to change. It is going to be reinforced because as we know, sustainability is the highlight and it's the top priority that people should start uh, focusing right now. Like we already, we were already talking about sustainability being the new normal. So we have to keep doing that and keep sustainability out of the marketing efforts of every company. So now we're seeing sustainability in every single brand and every single company as our marketing thing. So they're doing um, one collection and let's say they're 90% of their line is not sustainable and then they're using their 10% as, oh wow, we're a sustainable brand because 10 jeans of ours are made with uh, organic cotton. And that's not sustainability. So I think um, brands are going to start with thinking their stories and their values and how they translate them to the end consumer to really let them understand what sustainability is. Because the end consumer doesn't know what sustainability is. Only a few people in the only a few people in the population know what sustainability really means, and those people have a higher income because sustainability comes with an expensive price. So I think sustainability will have to be cheaper and will have to change. Like, you cannot have two teams and say one is sustainable and one is not. You only have to have one. And that's going to have to be sustainable. Like, you cannot let people choose. You have to educate them and then show them the sustainable option of your business and shift the entire chain to being sustainable. Absolutely. You know? This is uh, absolutely in line with what, uh, with what, uh, what many other uh, experts have been talking about. This is the uh, change for you know, what we're looking at in sustainability. Uh, one more thing I want to understand from you is... Uh, the size of uh, denim market in Mexico. What? How many mills are operating there currently, and uh, what really is the whole size of uh, Mexican uh, denim production? Well, um, I can tell you as far as we're a big exporter of, of denim in the U.S. So. Um, the me like the den Mexico's denim industry is really big. We have over like I can name you five top companies of Mexican denim that are currently exporting to different countries and are key, key players in the denim industry globally. So um, this is a very difficult time for all of us because we are stopping production. We in the beginning of the year we saw a decline of the denim exports from Mexico. And we didn't want to see that thing declining. And with this, it's, um, it's concerning, but we are aiming for when this is all over and as the insuring becomes more uh, important, the Mexican industry picking up again. Definitely. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the, uh, the cycle of uh, complete cycle of uh, order placing till order execution from US market. Let's say uh, how much time it takes uh, from the time uh, a buyer in US places order in Mexico and the garments get delivered to them. So uh, let's say we are, are we talking about two months cycle and do you think this cycle will reduce further in the coming times because the retailers all over the world are looking for less investment in inventory. They don't want to take longer beds. So do you think Mexico is well placed to uh, further reduce this entire cycle of uh, supply uh, supply cycle? Um, well, I can tell you speed to market has been one of the key things that people are looking for Mexico, right? So as cycles get um, faster, uh, like we as a meal have to act faster. So to answer your questions, 
I I don't know how exactly to to translate this because after this crisis, people are going to start like when this is all over. I'm talking in a few months. Uh, brands are going to want to speed up the cycle because they're going to finish their their entire like inventory and then they're going to get no products. So there will be a lot of fast uh, reaction and they will need to produce because now they're going to stop production, right? So they're going to try to sell their inventory and their their inventory is going to be what they didn't sell, sell before, like old spring, summer collection and every order that they had on the way. So they need to really think their strategies because when they are going to run out of clothes to sell, they're going to start like feed to market. So at the beginning, I think we're going to start speeding up production and our times will have to be very, like we're going to have to really react. But as, as time goes by, I think this will make the supply chain slow down because we're start, going to start to realize that we don't need that much speed because I think seasons are going to take a slower pace. So in a couple of years now, or a couple of months, where people like already find the value of the supply chain and how we don't need that many seasons, maybe that's going to make uh, not all the Mexican industry per se, but every supply uh, chain in the world to slow down a little bit and to realize that we don't need uh, six seasons a year. We can just have two, we can just have uh, two, uh, or maybe, two. or maybe, even uh, uh, more core products and a very small part of uh, season products. Exactly. So uh, that's the only thing that's going to make it slow down. If we don't, however, we react to this, it's going to change the speed. Right now, everything is speed to market. Everything is uh, very, very fast. We need to react. We need to show the product. But that also caters fast fashion. So if we want to end fast fashion, we want to produce something more sustainable, we need to give it value. So if, if I'm talking about giving value to the thing, I don't need fast fashion to every six weeks bring me a new collection, that diminishes the value of the clothes. So why would I put something on sale after six weeks of being? Like, that means I'm teaching the consumer that the clothes is not, it's not good. So I think sales should be reconsidered. And if sales get reconsidered, and if seasons get, so, like, like, get longer, and if I'm not having so many collections, then the entire supply chain is going to slow down and it's going to be making sustainable products and more better products. Because as people and brands add the supply chain to speed up, that means they need to skip some like some steps on the way. And that makes them not sustainable. So the real challenge here right now, well, before this happened, was to keep the speed of the market, taking all the steps into consideration and being sustainable which at the same time costs more. So I think it's something we're yet going to see. And I really hope the market slows down to give more value to the products we make. Yeah, we really hope so, because uh, uh, now we really need to go into a situation when quality is uh, much preferred over the quantity. You know, everything goes by the quality. And uh, products have uh, real value. You know, it's not uh, use and throw. We don't uh, the apparel does not go to the uh, fields, refills, and uh, I mean we reduce our wastage. So, I mean this situation, what has been created by this pandemic, probably will uh, restructure our whole industry, and we will hopefully be wasting much less. Of course, and all of this is also making a lot of transparency happen in the supply chain. So I think people are having their time to be mindful and thinking, what am I buying? Is this really necessary? So to rethink how people buy, they have to be educated. So I think also this is a very good time for brands to educate their end consumer, you know? Like, what am I going to say after this uh, pandemia? What am I going to to tell the consumer. So that is going to be a very key part of the strategies and stories of the brand. So I think we're going to see a lot of, of these brands having stories of mindfulness, of family union, or of transparency, of sustainability and circularity, of getting back to what really matters, to the essentials. And I think all of these campaigns that we're going to see evolve and are going to help shift the mentality of the people and 
finally maybe going to start slowing uh, fast fashion and making all of these small brands, uh, sustainable brands, gain more momentum and more power because that's what we really need. We need to redefine the value of the product we're selling. It's the need of the time. So uh, what are the, any other positives you see from the current situation and especially uh, for as a industry and as Mexican industry? As a, what again? As, uh, as a complete industry, uh, do you see, uh, see any other positives coming uh, globally due to this pandemic? And uh, specifically for the Mexican industry? Uh, well, as we talked about, nearshoring is something we're aiming for, but we have to understand something. Like, this is on a long term thing because depending on how this plays out, like this virus thing plays out in every country. Is what's going to determine that you're showing. So if China opens up first and if the rest of the world is closed, then China is going to get more momentum and the Asian markets are going to be the ones that cater the need of the brands because the rest of the world is going to be closed down. So the possibilities of Mexico on a short-term basis depend on when their economy opens and when the government and we, when we beat this pandemic, right? But at the end, I do think people are going to start creating uh, possibilities of sourcing more locally or, or being more transparent about the supply chain and global emissions. And that means like global, uh, like carbon footprint. So those things are going to be the new normal on people's and consumers' minds. So some things that they didn't understand before, they're going to start hearing them and understanding the terms. So. Uh, I see a possibility of the marketing, um, Mexican industry growing, like picking up its piece again and start becoming more uh, important in the world. I really would enjoy that uh, because we have such an amazing industry here, Sandeep, and Mexico's denim industry is so misinterpreted in some of the brands' minds. I've been going to trade shows and I've been seeing people of different brands come by our booth and say, oh, wow, your product is so amazing. I love this, this and that. And then they ask, where are you from? And we're like, oh, we're from Mexico. And they're like, oh, no, we don't source from Mexico. Like, why do you have to have such a closed mind? We have top and state-of-the-art technology. We have the same kind of quality and even better as many, many other countries in the world. And we have, like, all of these, uh, like, people power, like, uh, work power that, has, that is working towards, like, making the in, in, denim industry better. So maybe this will start creating a more open mind to the to some of the brands that are, they were only sourcing in Asia or in Europe or in different countries and start actually sourcing their collections from this side of the hemisphere. So that's going to be a really opportunity and good possibility to, to see as people uh, look more into traceability and circularity and sustainability. So let's hope for that. I'm sure Mexico has a very great future and uh, specifically for all the points that you mentioned, Mexico, the Mexican textile industry is definitely poised for growth. Yeah, we have a big bright future ahead and let's hope for this to be over so we start uh, picking up. Yeah. Uh, do you want to say anything else to all our friends? Community is here, a lot of people are here, so anything else, any other message for you to do? Uh, well, uh, thank you very much to you for this opportunity. I enjoyed a lot of uh, speaking to you about this. And well, just to buy sustainable and to really understand the redefinition of the value chain and to take this time as a time for mindfulness, to be calm with yourself, to be calm with the environment, to really try to be happy in this situation as much as we can, you know, and when they this happening and they go out. I'm here again. I think the network, um, network is fun, yeah. So lots of positivity from my side. Hello to everyone. And uh, I think that was my message. And best wishes from our side to everybody in Mexico. Please Thank keep so safe much. and healthy. And uh, let's uh, start back again our normal life together. In Perfect. I look forward to seeing you in person. Same here. I do. Thank you, Anit. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Take care. Take care.